what is going on everybody and every time I see situations like this it's just it's really amusing to me <laughs> it's just so freaking hilarious so all right apparently GameSpot reviewed Gears of War Ultimate Edition and they gave it a dreaded low score of 7 out of 10 you heard me right a 7 out of 10 how dare they give this game a 7 out of 10? We need to call the National Guard. We need to call Batman. We need to call somebody to rectify this. Because how dare you give this masterpiece a 7 out of 10? That is just an insanely shit score. How dare you? You could probably tell the insane amount of sarcasm in there. Oh my god, these people. Do they not realize a 7 out of 10 is actually a pretty damn good score? 7 out of 10 is above average. 7 out of 10, you can also equate it to 70%, which was a pretty good score when it came to when we were in school. I remember in high school, I took pre-calculus, which was a huge mistake, by the way. I would have been ecstatic if I got a 70% on a test score. I'd be doing backflips in my front yard at the time if I got a 70% on one of those freaking hard tests. Because 70% is a passing score. I mean, it's not as high as an A or a B, but it's still a passing score. It's good. It's above average. So, yeah, that's that's not a bad score. But, I guess fanboys will never be satisfied unless a game gets a 9 or a 10 out of 10. But then again, that really shouldn't come to a surprise to anyone. I remember, and I think the biggest, biggest example I will always remember of fanboys attacking a form of media for giving a game a pretty good score but still not good enough for these fanboys was when excuse me was when if any of you remember the show X play that was on the old G4 TV network that was hosted by Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb they gave kill zone 2 if i remember correctly they gave it like an 8.5 I think, or they get, I don't remember the exact score, so forgive me for that, but I remember they gave it a really good score, and they said it was a real good exclusive for the PlayStation 3, but it still wasn't good enough for the Sony fanboys from back then, because Sony fanboys back then was just rabid, if any of you remember that, they were rabid, and they hammered, <laughs> they hammered X-Play and Adam Sessler for still being too hard on the game. And some of them, I remember even saying that, we can still sense the Xbox 360 fanboy in you. Because back then, the PlayStation 3 was still going through a rough spot. And it didn't have a lot of great exclusives. I think the only great exclusive it had at the time was the first Uncharted. And I know it had Metal Gear Solid 4, but I don't really see that as a great exclusive, but that's just my opinion. So it didn't have a lot of great hit exclusives for a lot of people. But Sony fanboys at the time would not hear any of it. So that, that, that example will always pop in my head when I see these type of situations arise. But anyway, let's talk about Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Gears of War Ultimate Edition, does it deserve a 7 out of 10? I firmly agree 100% with that score. I do. I think by today's gaming standards which is how these reviews are being done, the game deserves a 7 out of 10. It does. I mean, did people just all of a sudden forget that the first Gears of War is almost 10 goddamn years old? Gears of War 1 came out in November of 2006. That was almost 10 years ago, people. 10 years ago. Gaming has evolved 
since the first Gears of War game. The game is now old. It's archaic now. And for any of you who have not tried this game yet, who have played the original Gears of War, but have not tried the Ultimate Edition yet, I'm here to tell you, at least when it comes to the campaign side, while they did add in the PC version's chapters, because the PC version got exclusive chapters, aside from upgrading the visuals, which they did a damn good job of, Excuse me, they did a damn good job of upgrading those visuals. I have to say that. They did a real good job of that. Aside from that, they did not change a single goddamn thing in the campaign. They did not change the controls. They did not fix the insane amount of glitches that the first game had. And yes, this game, a lot of these glitches are still here. And I'm currently working on a glitch montage that... I will eventually release once I'm finished with the campaign. Because I want to compile as many clips as I can to make uh, to make a good montage. So, yeah. Some of these remastered games that come out, the developer tries to put some tweaks in there to fix some things. They did not do that with this game. It is left completely alone. Now, honestly, a part of me is actually fine with that. Because, you see, I've been a fan of the Gears of War series since the first game. Gears of War 1 was my first Xbox 360 game. That was This was my first game into last generation. And I got it in May of 2007, which is when I got my 360. This game is fan service for hardcore Gears of War fans. And I'm perfectly fine with them leaving the game alone because I don't want to see them tweak some things that might halter my experience with it. I want to experience the game as it was originally made. But the difference here is I can take off my nostalgic glasses for the game and can still see the game's faults. And I can still see how the game has aged terribly compared to today's games. So that is why, even though I love the game, I'm loving the Ultimate Edition, the game deserves its 7 out of 10 score. Because that's pretty much what the game is based on today's gaming standards. It's an above average game. Because if this game was not a re-release. If this game was a brand new game, and it was released just like it is now, it would be critically panned. It would. But because it's a re-release, it's not being as critically panned as it would be. So, you know, I, I just think people... Well, honestly, a lot of these people need to stop treating these remaster games as new releases because they're not new releases remastered games are re-releases they are re-releases of old games they should not be treated as a new release they should not be treated as the hot new killer game for that specific system that will try to compete with the other systems. That's not what these remastered games are intended for. And I wish people would understand that. These games are intended for fan service. And they are also intended for people who want to play the series or a specific game, but they missed out on the original version for whatever reason. Now here's their chance to play it. These games are not intended for... The regular gamer just browsing through all the games and they just pick up, oh, this looks cool, I'll buy this and try it out. No, I'll take it home and try it out. That's not what these games are intended for. So, honestly, I think people just need to be a little bit more educated on these remaster games. I, I really think they do. And as far as the Gears Ultimate Edition goes, do I recommend it? If you're a hardcore Gears of War fan and you have an Xbox One, it's a definite buy for you. It's a definite buy. I don't really have to go there. If 
if you've never played the Gears of War series and you want to try it out, it's highly recommended as well because not only do you get the remastered version of the first game, apparently it also comes with all of the other Gears of War games as backwards compatible for Xbox One. Now, I don't know if that's coming later or not because I've not seen any downloads for the older Gears of War games on my Xbox One, so I'm assuming it comes later with the update. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong there because I I, I thought this was supposed to come with all the older Gears of War games. But yeah, if you wanted to try out the Gears of War games and you never had, this is definite must-buy because it's going to come with every game. It's going to come with every game, even Judgment. But you can skip Judgment if you want. That's perfectly fine. You can skip Judgment. But if you want to try it, it comes with it as well. And not only that, it comes with the Gears of War 4 beta. Or access to the beta. So, yeah, if you want to try out the Gears of War 4 beta, then you need to definitely pick this up as well. But, yeah, it's deserving of its 7 out of 10 score. And that's not a bad score. It's a really good score. And I really wish people would be more open to seeing how good these scores are. Even fanboys, and I know fanboys won't do it, but 7 out of 10 is a good score, and they should be more open about that. But I know they won't, so alright, I'm done rambling. So, let me know what your thoughts are about this whole thing, and until next time, have a good one.